Well, a typical performance day in musical theater is a different per <laughs> typical performance day in opera. Like, for example, an opera, you do a dress rehearsal three days before you open, two days off, then you do the show. Here, the dress rehearsal is in the morning of opening night, which is that night. And then you do two shows a day, which is very strange, but that's what you do. I like to get there, put my stuff out, focus my brain on what it is I'm about to do, enough time to kind of get my body ready to go and vocally ready to go before the makeup happens, before the costume has to go on, before people come in and say, how you doing, you feel okay? How you doing, feel okay? You know, and you're feeling all of that. I like to be able to get my head in the right place. What I try to do is remind myself that the audience that's coming to see this ha has not been living with it as long as I have, and you have to really burn brightly so that they can get as much from the music you're performing as possible. One of my singing heroes, John Charles Thomas, started off in vaudeville, and then he might sing at the Met, and then he would sing new songs that were written for him, like Home on the Range and things like that. They all have different challenges. Obviously, opera, uh, you're, you're dealing with different languages all the time. Um, you're dealing with, you know, not being miked. I kind of find that the microphone allows you to use a a kind of palette that I would normally use for a recital because the hall's 600 seats as opposed to the Met. It's 4,000 seats where you're pretty much on loud and loudest all the time. That and South Pacific are, the, are the, probably the first two I had heard. I remember my mother used to listen to them around the house a lot and I had John Raitt in my head, you know, singing Carousel, which is fantastic. Real singing. For me, it's a pretty easy fit. You know, the role of Billy Bigelow, it's written for my voice type. I have to say, it's, it's not that difficult to slip into the part. The trickiest part is, you know, this anti-hero thing like I did with Gaylord Ravenel. He's not a good guy. Well, he is a good guy. He's not very easy to like because of some of the choices he makes. And turning him into a sympathetic character is tricky. But luckily, it's in English, and uh, the subtleties of that language, I think I have a pretty good grasp on. <laughs> I don't have any superstitions, particularly. Not when it comes to performing. I used to when I, would, when I started teaching. Someone got me a mati, one of those things that it's like an eye to like ward off the evil eye. I'm a professor at the University of Illinois. It's about the sixth year into it now. I've learned to really enjoy it when you see uh, progress being made by your student. And I had to realize not all of them are gonna be you know, professional singers singing with the Philharmonic or the Met or whatever, but they do find their, their niche and the thing they love the most. And when they find that, is, is really fulfilling.